Aloha, Aaron from Hawaii Music School here today. I'm here with my ukulele and my giant cup of coffee. So it looks like it's starting to be a great day. I've got a couple of questions from via email from you guys. And I want to start off, before I answer the questions I got in the mail, um, I have one question that gets asked a lot. The difference between low and high G ukulele. They actually do change the string. So you don't want to take your high G string and just tune it down to a low G. It's not going to have the same tension as the other strings and it will not sound good. There are non-wound low G strings as well. I personally use a wound G. Um, I, I don't mind the, the scratchy sound that, that comes with it. Some people do. Me personally, I kind of I kind of like the tension that it gives me. It gives me an even balance throughout all the strings. So that's my preference. But Worth does make a pretty good set that has a all nylon low G. The, the problem that I have with the, the low Gs that aren't wound though is that they tend to be a little bit softer in volume than the other strings. But yeah, definitely there are differences in a low G and high G ukulele. Your cording though is exactly the same. So if you're gonna be using an F chord, it's still an F chord, you're still in the same place, except that this is an octave down than it would be on a high G. So, you know. You can play those kinds of licks on here and it's um, it's got the lower notes. It helps out, I think, for playing stuff that you need a warmer tone for. It, it happens to be you know, it's kind of like playing a guitar capo on the 5th fret if you cut off the E and the A strings. Hopefully that answers any of those questions and gets them out of the way. Uh, if you need a further explanation, hit me up. Uh, let me know exactly what you're looking for and I will be happy to answer the questions for you. Alright, let's go to our questions that we have on the computer. So, um, question number one says, I saw a video you did for Hawaii Music Supply. I think it was a sound sample. You played a Capenna song. Do you remember the name of the song? What album was it on? Um, I am like the worst guy when it comes to this stuff. We did so many sound samples at Hawaii Music Supply that I honestly, it's half the time, you know, they, they would, you know, Andrew would point the camera at me and he'd be like, play something. And I would play whatever came to my mind. If it was a Capenna song, though, it was probably Kalenaku, which is that, you know, that song then it was Kalenaku. I'm not sure what album it was on. It might have been on Future Frontiers. You teach ukulele to people of all ages, right? Is it harder to learn when you're my age? I'm in my early 60s. That is um, that is a completely subjective question because some people learn really quickly, some people it takes a little bit longer. I find that the people that take a little bit longer to learn though end up understanding more if that makes sense i think because there's more detail that goes into the way they learn um people that pick up right away because their mind moves so fast a lot of times they have a tendency to skip over things that are really important and it it does create kind of a mental block when it comes to like trying to understand something that's got a lot of depth to it but everybody's different i've i've had people that uh, started playing in their 60s and you know they ended up being really good players within like a couple of weeks it doesn't really matter your age I think it just matters your ability to uh, be able to have your motor skills going in your hands and uh, your memory of course is gonna help because you're gonna you're gonna want to remember the chord shapes again doesn't doesn't really matter your age it's just about the way you learn and I think that's the responsibility of the teacher to be honest is to understand what language you're speaking and to try to try to figure out how you learn and how to make it better for you and, and easier for you and help you progress. I don't think it's harder to learn at an older age. I think it is never too late to start. So ukulele like anything else, just pick it up and play. So hopefully that answers that question. Question number three, do you recommend any books to help get started learning? I like books. I personally, I, I learned how to play guitar uh, by watching my uncles play and stuff, but I, I learned how to understand music theory from books. 
it depends on what you're trying to get out of the book. If you're wanting to learn how to play, I would I would suggest like watching people and listening to people and and playing with people. If you're looking at learning song lyrics and you want to learn new chord shapes and stuff, then a book is great. Um, some great reference books that I really like are the Jim Bailoff and Fred Sokolow have a book called The Fretboard Roadmaps or Ukulele Fretboard Roadmaps. I think that is a fantastic book. Um, Daniel Ho and Herboto Jr. have Exploring the Ukulele and Discovering the Ukulele. Those books are great for beginners because they have the tablature in there and they actually teach you how to play songs. And so, and a lot of them are Hawaiian songs. You know, a lot of Hawaiian music is not written. So um, I would go with something like that. You can't go wrong with the daily ukulele, you know, 365 songs. You, that That's great, you know, and um, the daily ukulele, the leap year edition or the baritone edition. Those are all great books to start on as far as reference books go and learning songs. Um, as far as learning music, I would I would coincide getting a good book with getting a good teacher because the teacher can help you walk through the book, especially a book like the fretboard roadmaps, because there's a lot of meat in that book. I think a teacher could probably walk you through that a little bit better. But yeah, I do recommend the fretboard roadmaps um, and also the exploring the ukulele and discovering the ukulele. Do you know of any ukulele builders that built a five string, you know, with both the high and low G? Actually, funny you should ask because I was just talking to a guy that owns the Willie K. Kanilea. And uh, that's a phenomenal ukulele. It's got both a high and a low G string, but not in the sense that you would think. It doesn't have like five separate strings. It's got like the doubled up G string. Um, Kala makes a ukulele that has that too. I think it's the... Uh, the cedar top, acacia sides and back, ATP CTG5 or something. I, I could be wrong on the, the name, but I know Kala does make one pillar. I think it'd be interesting to see somebody make a ukulele that has, you know, the four strings like this and then running like a banjo, but not like the halfway point, running like a full string um, on the, you know, the fit string so you can do the, the hammer-ons and pull-offs that you do on a, on a high G and and still have the low g for those other extra notes i think that'd be cool i don't know if anybody can pull it off it's probably not feasible but okay one more aloha aaron i've been a f i've been to a few of your house concerts here in washington have you ever had trouble carrying your ukulele on a plane i know you play a tenor carrying my ukulele on a plane i've never really had a problem i think they're pretty good about bringing an ukulele on the plane uh I, I usually just use my gig bag. Like for this this one, my Ko'olau, I have a auto bag. And so I use that bag to take with me when I go to the mainland. So um, I, I've i never had a problem with it. I don't think anybody, even I've, I've even flown a couple of times where we flew into Bellingham and... Um, you know, like we've had to catch the puddle jumper to go back to Seattle or was it vice versa, going from Seattle to Bellingham. But it was a smaller plane and there was less space on the top. And even then, they didn't really give me a hard time about my ukulele. So, um, of course, that was I was flying Alaska Airlines at the time. Um, I fly Hawaiian, uh, United, Delta. I, I've never had any issue with bringing my ukulele on the plane. So, yeah, you should be okay. You should be okay. If you've got a tenor size ukulele, I I don't see a problem. I mean, most of these most of these airlines are pretty good about you carrying an instrument on the plane. I think you're okay in that sense. If you're worried about it, though, get a hard case. And the hard case will protect it a little bit better. Keep in mind, though, it's a lot more visible when you have a hard case. So I don't know if they'd, if they'd be like, hey, you know, does that fit in the uh, carry-on bag or whatever. But I, I've never had a problem. So... I don't think it'll be a big issue, but hopefully that answers that question, and hopefully I've been able to answer your questions here today. So if you guys have any more questions, hit me up. It's hmsuklessons at gmail.com, or leave a comment on the video down here, or hit me up on Facebook. Anyway, uh, you can get the question to me. I will answer it on the vlog. Okay, aloha.